Debate. The member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Pleasure to, to rise and speak about this bill. I think we've all said uh, pretty clearly uh, on the opposition benches that we're generally supportive of this bill with some major concerns. And I just want to hearken back to uh, my friend from Toronto, Danforth, who talks about the race to privatization and to P3s generally. We've seen, because of the Auditor General's report, the danger in that, the $8.2 billion worth of danger in that. And actually, just uh, a week ago, there was a huge demonstration out in the front from our brothers and sisters in Opsu about just you know, where you end up when you begin to privatize. It hasn't worked. It doesn't work. It won't work. And Highway 407 is a perfect example of why it doesn't work. That money could be flowing into our coffers. And I also heard from the member from London West about the concerns over the delays, the time it takes to get your license reinstated. This is something all of our constituency offices face. We've all had those calls. People need their cars to work. They need their cars mo for mobility. These cars are not a luxury for many people, and they need them. And so four to six weeks without one is a problem, and that has to be uh, addressed. I also, uh, as the urban transportation critic, have asked the Minister of Transportation for a very simple set of facts. I asked back in the summer, I first met him back in June, I asked for Move 2020, when are the projects rolling out? How much will the projects cost? Where will the projects be? And I have yet to receive an answer. I think that's a problem. Move 2020 was decided under the era of Dalton McGuinty here. And we still don't have facts about the rollout of the projects. We need those facts. I need those facts as an urban transit critic. That's, and I think Ontarians need those facts. They need to know where all that money's going, where it's coming from, and what it's going on. So that's important too. Um, I, of course, am thrilled, and the member from Eglinton Lawrence mentioned this, that the one meter rule is finally in place in the spill. And I have to say, it goes to the Premier, who was then Transportation Minister, who at the time that that bill was tabled said it wasn't well thought out. And it's nice to know that she's changed her mind and that she admits she made a mistake. That in fact, not only is that bill or was it been well thought out, but it's now incorporated into the government bill. So good, it's good. The problems, of course, are in the details. But before I get to that, I want to start with the big picture because I am the urban transit critic for the New Democratic Party and I want to talk about what a city would look like with safe roads. We have examples. We're not speaking about utopia here. If you go to Scandinavia, if you go to most European capitals, you will find something you won't find in Toronto. You will find designated cycle paths. And I know my friend from Burlington who used to be with Share the Road and Cycle TO have called for designated cycle paths. Now we're not talking about lines on the street. The number one reason people do not bike in Toronto is because they don't feel safe. And quite frankly, Mr. Speaker, they're not safe. They're not safe. Hence the one meter rule. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle language around that, which I'll get into in a minute, which I'd like to change and which needs to be amended. But a, a, a healthy city, a safe city for transportation is a city where people can cycle safely. That's number one. Number two, it's a city that has a transportation system that's well funded. We have the worst funded transportation system, talking about other levels of government, in all of North America. We used to pay 50% of the operating costs of the Toronto Transit Commission right here in the provincial government. That's back in the days when the NDP was in government. Then, of course, the Conservatives came in and the Liberals continued to the tradition of downloading the costs of running the transportation system. We can see the result of that, Mr. Speaker. The result is people waiting for the bus in minus 23 degree temperatures. We can see people who can't afford to get on the bus because the fares are high. We see the, the problems, the problems of not putting money into infrastructure in Toronto for a long, long time. Two levels of government guilty of that. This one under the Liberals 
and, of course, Ottawa under the Conservatives. Both levels of government. We need a national transit strategy, and my goodness, we seem to need a provincial one too, because I haven't, we haven't seen that strategy rolled out. Um, so a healthy, safe city where transportation is concerned is a city with transportation where you don't need to take your car. You don't need to take your car to drive around Toronto. And I know TTC riders, and I want to give them a shout out, um, all of those good people, and Ontario Clean Train uh, Coalition, all of those folk who are working, because that's the other thing that this government's doing, Mr. Speaker, is they're going to be running a Union Pearson Express that's going to be diesel. Only Bangladesh is buying diesel equipment. That's the only city in the world outside of us that's investing in diesel right now. They're going to be running past my constituents' backyards, member from York Southwestern's backyards, member from Trinity Spadina's backyards, and others, and schools polluting the air, and will not provide transportation. Here's a you know, multi-million dollar operation that could provide transportation if it was electrified, if it had multiple stops, and if it tied into the Toronto Transit system, coming from Union all the way down, or sorry, Union all the way up to Pearson, that could be transportation. It won't be transportation. So again, we have a safety problem. We have a safety problem, and the safety problem is also environmental safety, which hasn't been mentioned, I don't think, too often. Environmental safety means keeping cars off the road when you can and where you can. So I want to get, I've only got a few minutes into the nitty gritty because I, although I was happy to see the one meter rule, um, my bill, our bill finally put into action here, sadly the, the language that they use is quotes and quotes as may be practicable. Uh, instead of the language used elsewhere in the act, unless the driver first ascertains that it can be done safely. Why not use clear language? Here is a bill that fines $500 to a cyclist if they don't have a light. $500 is what the fine is if you kill a pedestrian. Where is the justice and the logic there, Mr. Speaker? $500 not to have a light on your bike, which I agree you need, no doubt. But $500 for a fine for killing a pedestrian in a car? Something wrong there. Clearly amendments are needed. So privatization, we need amendments. This is a privatizing bill. We need to change that. Um, we need to change the language. Another thing we need to, to do, which MP Olivia Chow brought in and which killed a cyclist who taught at Swansea, uh, public school, and I will dedicate this to, to that memory, uh, is to put side guards, mandate truck side guards. This was Olivia's federal bill, could have been done here, needs to be done here. This is the one opportunity it could be done. Yet another uh, amendment that needs to happen. So just to, just to conclude, my goodness, 10 minutes goes fast. Uh, shout outs to Cycle TO, shout outs to Share the Road, shout outs to TTC Riders, shout outs to Ontario Clean Train Coalition, uh, shout outs to all of those people who try to make our roads safer. And yes, while we will support this bill, my goodness, it needs amendments. It needs amendments in the language, it needs amendments in the fine structure, and it needs huge amendments, as the member from Toronto Danforth pointed out, to the drastic privatization. This is kind of drive clean on steroids, Mr. Speaker. That's what this bill is. And for anybody who's heard about the drive clean uh, mess up, you'll know that this isn't going to correct it. Do we really want more 407s in our future? No, we don't. Um, so we need to amend that part of this bill too. Of course we want, you know, of course we need and want safer driving conditions and higher fines for those who don't um, text or drink or drug while driving. That's important. Demerit points, important. Let's please around, that's what this legislature is for, let's please around this legislature come together to put forward amendments, to treat them seriously, to take them seriously, to pass them. Then we'll have a really good piece of legislation, Mr. Speaker. That's what I think we should all be aiming for. And that's what I know in the New Democratic Party we're hoping for. Thank you.